Good morning. Today the church celebrates the feast day of St. Thomas the Apostle. If your name is Thomas, Tom, Tommy, or Thomasine, happy feast day to you. If you have a friend with that name, consider sending them a text message and wish them happy feast day. St. Thomas, also known as the Doubting Thomas, the one who did not believe that Jesus had resurrected from the dead. So unbelief is the theme here. Do you believe in the afterlife? In today's Gospel reading, uh, we learn that after the death of Jesus, the disciples were gathering uh, in the house. They were uh, locked indoors because they were afraid of persecution by the Romans and by the chief priests. And then suddenly, Jesus appeared in their midst. He said, Peace be with you. He blessed them, breathed upon them, gave them the power to forgive sins. All this was happening while Thomas was away. He was not there. So later when Thomas joined the disciples, the other disciples said to Thomas, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger to the nail marks, and bring my hand to his side, I would not believe. A week later, when Thomas was gathering with the other disciples, Jesus appeared through locked doors, and he said to all, Peace be with you all. Then he turned to Thomas, and he said, Put your finger and see my hands, and bring your hand to my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. At this point, Thomas was so distraught, he was sobbing and crying, I'm sure. And he said, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus said, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. What's amazing is that St. Thomas, he saw everything, right? He was with Jesus for several years now. He saw the miracles, all the great deeds, all the healings, the exorcisms. He saw it all. And yet in the end, he could not come to believe that Jesus had resurrected. According to some scholars, St. Thomas had a deep wound. It is the wound of sorrow, grief over the death of Jesus. It's such a deep wound that it clouded his judgment. It prevented him from believing in Jesus' resurrection. So too with us, we, saw, we see everything. We go to catechism classes, we go to mass all the time, we go to prayers, and yet we Unbeknownst to us, we might have a wound in our heart, and this wound could, could cloud our judgment in, in believing. Sure, we believe in the Holy Eucharist. It is the true body and blood of Jesus. We, we believe in that. But what is going on in our heart? Is it being stirred? St. Margaret of Cotona once said concerning the reception of Holy Communion, she said, This morning, my soul is greater than the entire world because it possesses you, Jesus, whom heaven and earth cannot contain. Wow, this morning when I received communion, my soul is so great, greater than the entire universe, because it possesses Jesus, whom heaven and earth cannot contain. That is beautiful. So my friends, today we surrender our pains and our wounds and our small sacrifices to Jesus by venerating his wounds. It is only through his wounds that we are healed. There's no other way around it. If you have this, the rosary or the uh, crucifix or the um, cross necklace or the holy card, venerate his wounds as often as possible. Also consider joining the flame of love. 
because they have a beautiful devotion to the holy wounds. And lastly, uh, we go to St. Thomas. We follow his example, and we ask Jesus to heal our unbelief. So if you would join me. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Oh, happy fall that gain for me the chance to know. Talk.